Excellent. And today, hopefully, we can remove some of that mystery as we move into the middle of the milk round graduate recruitment season with lots of assessment centres be kicking off in the new year. So starting at the beginning then, what is an assessment centre and why do companies use them? Well, the fact is that interviews alone was, was always the only way that a recruiter would check whether a particular candidate was the right person for the job. So in the past, most people would, would go for an interview and they would either be selected or not. And what um, psychology, occupational psychologists found out and tell us is that an interview is a very imperfect way of deciding the right person for the job. What might be a half an hour conversation, as good as that can be on its own, would never be good enough. Um, the idea of assessment centres was a way to see someone for a longer period of time, see them in a number of situations and see whether there was some consistency in the way this person presented themselves. And it was, it was discovered that by doing a, a number of activities over a half day or a day where a candidate would be um, assessed and observed, recruiters would get a much, uh, it, it's a boring phrase, but a more holistic picture of, of, of a candidate. So from the recruiter's point of view, it was a great opportunity and assessment centre process to really see someone um, as really as possible in what is a very artificial situation. And there's no getting away from that. It is artificial, but they do get to see each candidate in a number of different exercises. And then they can collate the, the statistics, the data they get from all those different um, situations or exercises and decide this particular applicant, this particular candidate matches what we want. Um, the, the assessment centre itself is set up so that the competencies the recruiter is looking for are mirrored in each exercise. So each exercise is designed so that a particular competency might be um, demonstrated or not. So an, an assessment centre process is in many ways a fairer process, a fairer way of assessing candidates. Um, but there are always other things going on. Obviously, there's the objective part of it where they're, they're looking for particular competencies. But obviously, the assessors, the observers are human beings who pick up um, lots of nonverbal signs and, and make subjective impressions um, of, of candidates. So that's a, an additional dynamic that's in there. And the assessment aspect can be a really strange one the, the first time you go through an assessment mm -hmm. centre when you suddenly realise that you've got people who just sat there with a, a pen and a notepad just watching you and writing down the things you do. I, I, um, yeah, I think that particularly is the biggest surprise. And one of the things that I did was actually, um, as, a, as a candidate, go through some assessment centre processes myself. And even though I knew and un thought I understood it, going through it is a whole different thing. And you're absolutely right. When you see someone standing with a clipboard, watching you with full attention on you and you only in, say, a group exercise, in a group discussion, and see them writing notes about you, you feel, and I put it in the book, like a bug in a jar, as if some small child is peering at you with intensity. And that is both a compliment, actually, that they want to attend to you that much, but also quite unnerving. And... Um, it, it, it really is a, a particularly specifically um, challenging part of the assessment centre process. And as you say, it's not often that you get someone's full attention just um, watching really what you're doing the entire time. It's you know, just something that doesn't happen in day to day life. Yeah, and, and some people might actually, there are some people who thrive on that, who actually like being the centre of attention all the time but it is full on and it may be for a half day or a full day it might be for two days that is a lot more than most people um would would normally expect so um, it, it is a specific part of the process and thinking then about those assessors what is it exactly that they'll be looking for and, and assessing you on well I, I mentioned competencies um if it's a if it's a well-run well-designed assessment center um, they would, there will be a job role profile of some kind and within that job role profile will be skills, knowledge, competencies that are required to do that job well. Normally 
that job role profile is based on a previously successful candidate who ended up as a successful employee for that company. So someone, they're, they're perfect candidate and the competencies, the skills and knowledge, um, th th those type of things are what they're looking for. And on their clipboard, they will have a sheet with a checklist and a checklist with very specific a competence. So it might be in a group exercise, it might be asking open questions. So if you're in a group exercise and you ask really good open questions that drive the discussion and help the, the group work collaboratively, those open questions are considered a positive indicator. A negative indicator might be someone interrupts someone. So they'll, they'll, they'll have a list of competencies or skills on their clipboard and they will be looking out for them, the pluses and the, and the minuses. And that's what they're ticking. Or they'll be writing um, little commentary about things that, the, that you as a candidate will have done that are good or, or bad. So yeah, it's a, it's a very intense process. But it's actually at the end of it, when they score that, the positives or negatives, your score will, can be then compared against someone else's. And that, that makes for more objectivity, they, they, they believe. Thank <laughs> you.